Louise has a brain tumor. She is confronted with serious risks and decisions. Without treatment, the tumor threatens to destroy her hearing and attack adjacent neural regions. The treatment, however, also includes certain risks. Her situation must therefore be considered carefully. The health risks associated with the tumor call for immediate treatment, but Louise has another reason for wanting the tumor treated. Only with unimpaired hearing will she be able to continue working in her profession without difficulties. I work as a vet for larger animals. The cattle and horses are usually treated in the barn, which is a relatively noisy setting. This means that you have to concentrate very hard to hear the faint sounds when examining the lungs, the heartbeat, or the gastrointestinal function, for example. Sometimes only a slight nuance marks the difference between a sick and a healthy animal. Until recently, Louise was able to listen to the farmer with the sick animals without removing the stethoscope during the examination. But this is no longer possible. It doesn't affect me in that I'm not able to work, but things that were my strengths, such as being able to hear the faintest sounds, are gone. If the tumor continues to grow uncontrolled, it may eventually constrict Louise's brainstem and result in respiratory paralysis or even cardiac arrest. When I heard the diagnosis, I was completely overwhelmed. I was so shocked that I felt nothing. I sat down on the chair and said, hmm, I see, well, if you say so, then that's what it is. Fate presents Louise with challenges she didn't choose. Not only must she learn to accept her disease and the risks associated with it, she must also educate herself about treatments that could help her. Ultimately, she will have to decide whether she wants conventional surgery or an alternative form of treatment. This is an important decision to make. In this situation, one must distinguish between the risks of invasive and non-invasive surgery. Invasive surgery involves anesthesia, which can cause problems. It is also necessary to open up the cranium during surgery, which may lead to infection. Bleeding may occur. All these risks associated with the surgical procedure are eliminated with non-invasive surgery. Once again, Louise is clearly shown that the tumor's growth must be stopped. The fact that a painless and less invasive form of treatment, which does not even require hospitalization, exists, brings her closer to a decision. The CyberKnife procedure would avoid both the risks of open brain surgery and the side effects of conventional radiotherapy. Radiotherapy was from the start out of the question. There was also laser knife treatment. I used the internet to inform myself, but it was difficult to assess whether this was the type of treatment that was right for my condition and what risks are associated with it. In this procedure, a robot-controlled linear accelerator directs a high-energy beam with sub-millimeter accuracy onto the tumor tissue. The overall irradiation dose is delivered from up to 200 different positions. This minimizes the risks of the treatment. Before the consultation, I was anxious. I didn't know what would happen during and after the treatment. I didn't know what the risks involved in surgery were and whether I would suffer any temporary or even permanent damage. Will I still be able to work? Will I lose my hearing? Not all of Louise's questions can be answered. There will always be the possibility of residual risk. However, Louise has reached a point where she must make a decision about the type of treatment she will have. In my case, all the facts indicated CyberKnife therapy as being the safest option with the least risk. Louise decides to go for the cyber knife treatment. For now, worries about residual risk with this treatment method have been put aside. So, this is the treatment facility, the room where you will be treated. 
At the back, there is the robot, the radiation device, or linear accelerator. This is what will be doing the work in the operation. Please take a seat. No, cyber knife treatment is not free of risks. However, not treating the patients is also risky. It's for this reason that we treat sick patients. In such cases, it's vital to select the treatment that presents least risk for the patients. This could be surgery, and it could be cyber knife treatment. Sometimes both methods are equally risky. In such cases, it's the patient's personal preference which determines the method of treatment. A plan for the cyber knife treatment is prepared and programmed on a computer. First, the areas that must, under all circumstances, be avoided in the radiation procedure are marked. Then, the target area is marked. Marking the so-called tuning structures is necessary to ensure that the up to 200 positions from which the radiation beam targets the tumor are accurately determined. If there are errors in the measurement, the patient's treatment plan would be affected and all patients undergoing this treatment would receive the wrong dose. This is the main risk of the physicist's work. The duration of treatment is between 45 and 60 minutes. The system immediately adjusts itself to the slightest of movements of the patient during this time, so that the treatment remains accurate. The worst feeling during the treatment is the feeling of entrapment, not being able to move, especially when the radiation beam comes down. You're really hoping that everyone's calculations were accurate and that the beam hits the right spot. I've decided to trust this technology. This treatment is currently the least invasive one. I'm glad that I don't feel any pain and only have to lie there for an hour before it's over. In my lifetime, I've experienced many difficulties and I've had many problems. I was always the strong one who had to help everyone. Now I've been diagnosed with this illness. Maybe it's irrational, but I thought that this was just how it had to be. Risks give rise to uncertainties, and these uncertainties often result in anxiety and feelings of vulnerability. However, dealing with potential risks has allowed Louise to recognize her strengths. Shortly after the treatment, the patient may experience queasiness and a sense of pressure on their head. These side effects, however, cease within the first few minutes or couple of hours of being treated. Generally, medication is administered to relieve the patients from these symptoms of discomfort. The cyber knife treatment was completed without any complications. The question remains whether this new form of treatment was able to render the tumor harmless and prevent its further growth. Louise will have to wait for some time before she knows the answer. In one's life, one must be aware of risks and opportunities. How we assess those risks and opportunities and the decisions we make about them will always be influenced by our uniquely individual life history and personal values. In my opinion, the greatest danger that anyone could be faced with is isolation, that they isolate themselves or are isolated by society. For this reason, I'm happy with my choice of going through with this therapy. And I hope that this tumor will no longer be active and that it won't affect my life and that everything will be fine.